Thank you very much, Cameron, for joining us for your talk today. Uh, once you're ready, I'll let you fire away. Yeah, thanks, Heidi. So thanks, everyone, for coming uh, this morning, uh, especially with like Kai going on and stuff like that. Um, so I'm Cameron, and most of you, I should imagine, remember me from when I did my PhD here at Swansea. But if not, I finished my PhD last year in 2020, uh, mm -hmm. and I was working on uh, deformable interfaces and looking particularly in the context of art and design and developing novel interactions that can kind of make them uh, more physical and realistic. Uh, and today I'm going to give you a little overview of some of the stuff I did uh, and hopefully try and answer the question of uh, why it actually uh, all matters. Um, so I think before I talk about the research, I'll talk about why it matters to me, and then you can work out whether it matters in the, the wider context. So I'm sort of heavily driven by technology and innovation from a young age. I've always kind of been into tech and how we use it and stuff like that. But I'm also particularly interested in um, sort of celebrating sort of human aspects of it as well. So, you know, uh, celebrating the diversity of what we can do and not letting technology dumb us down. Um, the book you see there, You Are Not a Gadget, kind of outlines that really nicely where, you know, as we have all this innovation and all these new bits of technology coming out, remembering what makes us human and how we can make technology best serve us is one of the key reasons of the, that drives my research and why I'm really interested in developing not stuff that just is more efficient, um, but stuff that actually celebrates human um, expression uh, and our, our diverse abilities. And that's what brings me to sort of art and design, because, you know, nothing says human expression better than art and design. Um, and it's particularly honed in on sort of painting um, and digital art where people are creating sort of images and whether that's graphic design, concept art, all these things that um, originally were done on canvas um, or in print um, before we switched to digital tools. And it's been quite unique about art. It's a, it's a physical form of expression. So people that use brushes, people that use these paints, you know, they know how their paints feel. They know what tools to use. Uh, I myself was doing some painting even last night. Uh, and I, you know, I'm quite a novice painter, but I, I'm still learning how to sort of thin out paints and kind of get that kind of physical feel. It's a very tangible experience. You kind of get all your pots out and you have these physical tools. Yet, uh, when we move to the, the digital world um, for all its glory, often we're just kind of moving things around in kind of flat land. You know, we click a color there, we move a slider, um, we adjust some little buttons and ones and zeros. Um, often it's just kind of clicking a mouse and moving things around on the screen. Is this as tangible? Is this as expressive? And this is something I was quite interested in. And from talking to artists and stuff like that, it's something they miss, but digital tools are still awesome. You know, we've got much more, um, we've got all these like swatches that we can move around and dynamically program. You can kind of now, you don't have to like trawl through all your different paints. You can kind of quite easily program things to kind of help you find um, colors, be there for color blindness or just finding like complementing colors. Um, and we're starting to develop quite interesting tangible tools that are replicating um, these sort of into, uh, these the real world um, into the digital and you know with the iPad pro and stuff like that you can take an entire art studio with you on the go um, so I was looking at how we could like emulate some of the more realism and the more textures and stuff like that and bring that into this digital world and something that I, I'll leave on here in the motivation is something that I heard from um, one of my participants um, when I was doing interviews is he said that Photoshop is clicking, not drawing. And that was something that really like <laughs> he, he kind of gets hung up on because he loves Photoshop for all of the, the possibilities and everything he can do and the way he can share his work. Um, but he still always draws things by hand first because he likes that physical feeling and he never feels like he can be truly creative in Photoshop. He sees that as more of an end result after he's done the um, creative bit. So from like discussions and stuff like that I did in my PhD, I started to learn a lot more, a lot about the tools and the paints and different swatches and stuff that artists and designers use. I conducted lots of different interviews and kind of really immersed myself in the world, even becoming a little bit of a painter myself once or twice. Um, so I was able to talk to people in art classes that, you know, work with these tools day to day and they, it's not just talking about like their end result, but it's the, the process that they go through, the, the, the physicality of the paints, the different brushes that they use, 
Um, and then even with designers then like when they get their swatches out and when they work with clients to maybe create posters and themes like that, that kind of still using physical tools for that creativity and expressive side. Um, so, sorry. Sorry, I'm using the room. Um, but digital art unlocks uh, different possibilities, as we said, for them. So they have more accuracy with their colors. They have these dynamic um, being able to pick their colors and being able to use iPads as a portable um, tool on the go. So how can we take this kind of digital world and kind of pair it with the physical um, realistic aspects of it too? So a growing area in human computer interaction at the moment is this idea of deformable interfaces. So being able to kind of have modular screens that you can take apart or create dynamic and tangible um, uh, textures on screens or actuated interfaces that rise and submerge from different screens. They bring in a new form of diverse things, but using the digital that we know. Um, so I, so my research kind of sits in this aspect of working with these artists and designers and using human centered design where we go out and talk to them and learn about their different designs. And then also kind of this engineering and chemistry hardware development aspect that kind of merge together to create some of these new interfaces um, that I'll show you. Um, all in all, taking this kind of digital and current tangibles um, that are out there like stylus and stuff like that and trying to then bring about these next load of interfaces. So something that I've built before was this uh, interface that kind of acts like a control where parts of the interface will submerge to create paint pots where you can push in and start to kind of have these sensations of scooping and stirring paint. Uh, and based on different like force abilities, you can kind of go in and kind of decide how much you want, uh, mix different colors together, uh, and that all kind of submerged. The idea in the future is that that could be like a glass screen um, that turns into these pots. And then the other aspect then is all these things will then merge and those will become like your nibs and different um, selectors of tools. So it's like that sensation of grabbing and picking and then squeezing to kind of like form your brush or whatever, kind of like when you would kind of scoop out um, the different nozzles and stuff like that uh, to then be able to paint onto a screen, kind of trying to pair those kind of physical aspects with the digital. Other bits then was kind of maybe looking more uh, making the digital physical. So taking from a physical aspect of looking at the, a slider that's on the screen and then looking at how we can improve that. So this here is a physical slider, but as you're kind of changing the, the nib adjustment or something like that, you'd actually feel that change um, in your hands. So you've got that kind of physical feeling of a, a size or whatever it is. Then something uh, a bit more novel was after talking to lots of different painters was trying to how we could emulate um, the paint aspect. So here um, is the use of uh, hydrogel, which is a, a chemical that uh, we can change its viscosity based on temperature. So to get that feeling of stirring and scooping paints, uh, rather than you saw in the prototype um, beforehand where it was just a foam layer for it, this is now starting to create that like realistic liquid feeling uh, and start and like like how an oil paint would work, um, where you start with a, a thick blob, you can start to stir and kind of smoosh out um, that feeling. Um, so if you you know if you wanted to see how that felt, you know if you push against the part of your thumb there and kind of move it along your different fingers, that's kind of how it would feel uh, with this current prototype in terms of stirring that out. And then lastly, looking more towards designers and their physicality of working with swatches, with clients and stuff like that. Uh, this is an interface we built that's kind of modular where like a phone or a tablet, you could take it apart and have these different colors. And then when you come together then um, in meetings um, to decide on colors or try to find like the right complementing colors, the right colors for color blindness and such, um, you could start to play and have these like playful experiences picking and showing clients um, different colors. So over the course of you know, doing this work, you know, we've contributed um, lots of different things, worked with um, designers at the BBC, designers local here in Swansea, and many different um, painters, hobbyists, design students, um, looking at in, uh, enhancing these art tools with actuated interfaces, physicality, different textures, and modular screen devices. 
Um, and also uh, from this, we've also created um, a list of like wider implications for deformable interfaces at large. So not just working within the context of art design, but using art and design as this really expressive medium to then push forward um, interactions and interfaces and designs in deformables that have wider implications, potentially in engineering, medicine, video games, other aspects of technology. So we can move towards a future where we're not just clicking and dealing with, you know, flat land interfaces, flat screens, um, but we can actually bring um, texture uh, and physicality and using tools um, into computer science. So here's some of the uh, publications we've uh, published um, and some of the impact we've had um, over the last couple of years with this work. Um, and thank you for listening. I invite any questions. Uh, and you can keep up to date with anything that I'm up to uh, on Twitter and Instagram and at CBSTF, most places. Um, thank you very much.